Ladies with gentle hands. Today in this video, I'm gonna teach you how I went into over $3,000 in debt after my first year of dropshipping to now making over $500,000 a year consistently with my dropshipping brands by selling products just like this one right here. I know, very clickbaity title, but it is the truth at the end of the day. And in fact, we are gonna be talking about my first ever dropshipping brand and basically my story for a lot of you guys who are newer to this channel because it is a good one. Basically, I had this store right here called Umaro Sports. It was a brand that I owned for three years. I ended up selling it for over $70,000. And we're gonna get into the full story as to how I did that, the ups and the downs, and just really give you a realistic view of what dropshipping really is. Because even though I've gotten to a level that you may aspire and cling on to, and you say, wow, Ethan, you are perfect, you are handsome, you are jacked, and you make money. God, you have it all. Don't forget big penis. And I know I do, but it wasn't always like that. I used to be just like you, a complete loser in every facet of my life. But I was able to change that after I started dropshipping. And once you buy my course, your life will change too. <laughs> All jokes. But yeah, it was quite the journey. And the reality is for every single person who's been successful in dropshipping, they have had some skeletons in their closet. They have had to deal with some very difficult challenges, especially early on that the average person would have quit. No doubt in my mind. It takes a certain almost messed up individual to have enough resilience to go through the minefield that is online business, any online business, whether it's dropshipping, Amazon FBA, they all have their own set of challenges that will make you stress, that will make you pull your hair out, that will make you constantly question, is this worth it? Is the prize at the end of the rainbow worth the squeeze of this lemon? So let's get into my specific challenges because yes, I had quite a few. So how did I get into dropshipping in the first place? And I apologize in advance if my voice cuts out. It's very early in the morning. And speaking of which, oh my God, quick surprise guest. Hello, I'm Carlos Sainz, driver for Ferrari. Thank you very much for the win. I appreciate it. I am a Ferrari driver, only for this year. I am currently still jobless. So if, any, if anyone has an open seat, please let me know. I think that was a decent Carlos Sainz impression. Pretty decent. But let's gather around the campfire and let's start this story. In fact, just to set the mood for all of you, I actually have this candle that I made. I know, super gay, but that's the price of going on dates once again. Because if there was anything I learned from my last relationship, you got to go on cute dates. Otherwise, she's going to steal all your clothes, steal your heart, and make you hate women. But thank God she didn't steal this hoodie. Otherwise, that would have been the biggest simp move of all my entire life. I would have lost my mind. I know, pretty professional. So where were we, sexy? Now that we got the lights all lit up, where do you want to go from here? <laughs> okay, let's get into the story. I know. So when I first started dropshipping, I was 16 years old and I was in a weird spot in my life where when I was 15, I really was on NPC mode. I was playing FIFA nonstop, seven, eight hours after school, Call of Duty, Clash of Clans, every single major video game you can think of, I was obsessed with. And I didn't really have much of a grasp on my future. I wasn't thinking about it. I was basically convinced myself that I was going to be a professional athlete and that was just going to be the avenue that I went down or a financial banker because I was good with numbers. Now, that is all fine and dandy and I think you can live your life obviously and not have to take it super serious for those years. However, I had to grow up much faster and I got into this industry much younger than the average person because unforeseen circumstances had kicked in where I had gotten expelled from my school when I was 15. I went to this bougie private school. Yes, I am in the upper middle class. My parents actually did love me. And if you don't have at least a million dollar net worth, you shouldn't even be watching this video. You're not qualified enough. <laughs> All good. But I basically got expelled because there was this horny Spanish girl who had transferred to our school 
And if you know anything about Spain women, they are very aggressive, very horny, and very intimidating. And this one had set her eyes on me, and I was just her prey. And she forced me to do a lot of things that I regret in public. She turned me into a bad boy. As you can probably tell, that's not necessarily my natural disposition or demeanor. Kind of a vanilla square dude. I did not drink or do any drugs up to that point in my life. And at this point in my life, six years later, barely have done it still. But I basically got expelled after being suspended multiple times because of this witch. And subconsciously, I think she was a big reason why I actually ended up moving to Spain after high school. So I could find more women just like her to take advantage of me. <laughs> okay, so... After getting expelled, I went to this public school called Miami Palmetto Senior High. It's the same school that Jeff Bezos went to, which makes it very difficult for me to ever be the most successful person from my alma mater. It's kind of stiff competition. And I got started because when I was 16, I realized, okay, I'm not going to get recruited by D1 colleges because I've been expelled. I'm also not going to get to a very prestigious school either because of being expelled. So basically, both my career paths have now just completely evaporated i am screwed and it was terrifying i remember just thinking holy crap i had went from full npc mode full airplane mode of okay i'm just playing video games i'm taking day and life day to day i'm not thinking about my future to now the only thing i can think about is my future and obviously in hindsight it was definitely a blessing in disguise because it was the first time that i realized holy shit ethan you have to get your life together You've been on cruise control, bro. So I looked up on Google how to make money as a teenager. And when I looked it up, I saw a lot of different business models. I saw Amazon FBA. I saw affiliate marketing. And then eventually I watched a few YouTube videos from guys like Tanner Plains, Noah Brewer, and Sebas Bedoya. Not Sebas Esqueda, not Sebas Georgia, Sebas Bedoya. If you look him up, he has a series called Zero to 100K six years ago it is still up and it's actually frankly a bit nostalgic and hilarious to see how bad we all were as marketers back then with our websites our ads all of it was so crap yet it made money it's it was the gold rush i can't lie now you really gotta up your skills you gotta know the trade secrets you gotta know the secrets of the trade if you really want to make money nowadays it's definitely gotten harder i can't lie but if you know your stuff it's still very profitable and when I saw these teenagers who weren't smarter than me and they weren't harder worker than, than me, making more money than me, I realized, oh my God, this is the thing. If I put all of my eggs in one basket, if I put all of my time, if I get obsessed with this, like I've been obsessed over sports and obsessed over video games, then I can actually make money doing this and not need to go to college because I knew I never wanted to go. I was a C student at best. Now, when I went to this new public school. I took all AP classes. I was trying to be with the smart kids, but I was doing all right. I'm not going to paint this picture that I was just a Gary V. I failed all my classes because that wasn't the case. I actually did have somewhat of a brain. I just didn't really like doing homework. I didn't apply myself in that way. So I decided to enroll into a few courses by Gabriel St. Germain. I believe at that time, Dan De Silva, a few other people, and I had the Dunning Kroger effect immediately. I had this confidence, which really stemmed from not knowing much, but knowing just a little bit to where I thought I knew everything. So the peak of Mount Stupid, according to the Dunning Kroger effect. And I got into it guns blazing. So the first month of my dropshipping store, I started this brand, Umro Sports. And I came up with the name by doing a Latin word generator and it came up with the name Umro. And I was like, okay, I had a few other names, but Umro Sports sounded the hardest, the drippiest. Got a logo from Fiverr, we were in business. And I, the first mistake I made with this store is that I added almost every single sports product that any athlete could ever want onto this store. I had hundreds of products, literally air pumps, like who's going to buy an air pump from just a random store? But I just thought, oh, if they're interested in what I'm selling here, then they'll probably also want this as an upsell because I know they're in this target market, which isn't necessarily the worst thinking. It does make logical sense. But the reality is first lesson for you guys, if you're a beginner, people do not hop around your store. 
when you send them to your product page, 95 to 98% of people are going to stay on that page and not go anywhere else except for the add to cart page and your checkout page. They do not browse your website. They do not care about your brand. They do not care about the other products you offer. This is why I test with general stores because even though there's baby and dog products, and I understand that doesn't make sense. And if you were shopping, you would notice that and it would be a red flag for you. The majority of people are not going to notice at your website as much as you. It's a lot like your face. If you have a pimple, you're going to stare at it. You're going to be like, oh my God, everyone's going to notice. They're going to think I'm ugly. Uh, what will my crush say? They don't actually care about you. They're not looking at you as intensely as you are. Same thing with your website. So don't overthink it. However, don't just add products for the sake of having products. Only add products that you would actually test. Now, the next big mistake I made is that I decided to only sell products that I would personally buy. And that honestly limited me for the first couple of years I drop shipped. Because you really want to focus on just learning the skill of marketing overall and learn how to market any product. And that is going to allow you to really scale to seven to eight figures. Most people that I know that have scaled brands and dropshipping to those numbers are selling products that they didn't really even buy for themselves. They don't really have a strong affinity towards them. They just knew there was a huge need in the market for that. They saw the gap and they sold a product that fulfills that gap. So if you notice that, oh, I love dogs, but obviously there's a hundred gajillion different dog stores out there. Sure, you can try to sell in it, but the reality is you're setting yourself up for a much harder road because of the amount of competition you're going to face because everyone and their mother wants to sell in the dog niche. So you should really try to learn the skills of website design, marketing, and really there's only four skills in dropshipping. It's just product research, website design, ad creation, and media buying. It's just that. And once you learn those skills, that gives you the flexibility to test in any niche and actually find out what works best for you. Because what most likely is going to happen if you actually do make dropshipping work is that you are going to figure out a certain buyer persona or a certain niche that you have trained your eye in and because you've tested so many products in that niche, you know exactly what people are going to want. So I give myself a little bit of credit with actually sticking with the niche and not bouncing around because that's what happened with me. After the six months, after a year, I finally really sharpened my eye enough through all the trial and error to now discover whenever there was a new design, whenever there was a new product in my space, I knew it was going to hit with the blueprint I had developed. But when you're a beginner, you don't have that eye. It only comes from pattern recognition, from either trial and error of testing those products or from leaning on the experience of a coach who already has that experience and then can pass it down to you. But I didn't have that and I decided to go the hard way the first couple months. So what ended up actually happening? So after I started my store, I got in my Fiverr logo. The first month I spent literally just building my website. It took me that long. I would spend seven, eight hours every single day. I was absolutely obsessed with that. I was watching Sebas Bedoya's tutorial. I was watching all these other tutorials, but I was a perfectionist and I took way too long, mainly due to analysis paralysis and also just information overload. I was listening to so many different people and a lot of them had contradicting advice and I didn't know who to believe and what to trust. So that also slowed me down considerably. And that's another lesson in itself where if you want to do dropshipping, it's very advantageous just to listen to one person and do their method if you believe in them. If they have gotten results for their own brands and they've gotten students results as well, then they clearly have something that is repeatable. So you want to follow people that have repeatable blueprints. You don't want to just follow random people on Instagram that are flexing the lifestyle to you. But if you go to their videos, there's not much value. So when picking a mentor or when picking someone just to watch on YouTube, always lean towards the people that already have tons of content for free that you can obviously digest, apply, and see if it actually works for you. Because just because someone has a ton of videos doesn't mean those that information is good either. There's a lot to it. I know. Welcome to the real world. So after the first month of building the website, I started to run some organic traffic because I was not necessarily even broke. I was just afraid to invest money. I was very scared. I had a scared mentality when it came to my business. And that is also a complete wrong mentality. And you have to spend money to make money. But I didn't want to do that. So I decided to grow an Instagram page where I would repost common sports highlights of the day to try to gain more followers. And then I would go to House of Highlights. I would go to all these top sports pages and I would follow 500 people a day back when you could do that. My thumbs would literally be bleeding 
after a few weeks because of how much tapping I was doing. It's amazing that I did not get some sort of Parkinson's or what do they call it when your hand cramps? I'm blanking on the name. I'm sorry. It's very early in the morning. Comment down below. Carpal tunnel. Got it. Hey, I'm fast. I'm good. Give me some credit here. Give me some skin. All right. But yeah, that's that was my strategy. And then after about five posts in a row of doing sports highlights, I would do one post of an ad for my product and I would just hope and pray that people would buy. Or when I got a new follower, every single time I got a new follower, I had a copy and paste message saying, hey, we're a sports store. Go check us out. And I would get traffic. I would get a lot of traffic. But boy, oh boy, was it low quality traffic because I was trying to market to people like me, broke high school athletes. Terrible decision. Don't choose a market that's full of broke people because again, you're just making it so much harder on yourself. Choose a market that has disposable income. Even if you're not a part of that market, that's just a huge mistake. People think it's easier to sell to people like them. It's not. It's easier to sell products that have proven demand to markets that have proven disposable income and are willing to spend a lot of money to solve whatever problem they have. That's the easiest thing to do. It just seems more intimidating. And I would say don't feel like you have to sell cheap products too because that's another thing where I only felt like I could sell necklaces like this that cost $2 and I would sell them for 19. I didn't have the confidence to sell high ticket. But you realize over time, the only brands that are really scaling to 100K month in the dropshipping space usually are brands that have an AOV of 50 to $60 and have a 4 to 5% conversion rate. Those are the numbers you have to have to realistically scale to those levels. And I never scaled Umro Sports to 100K a month. I got a few good months, 50, 60, 70K, but I never broke 100 because simply my margins weren't there. They were decent because it was a necklace or different jewelry. And that's what I ended up going to. I sold sports jewelry to different athletes, but I never could have scaled because of that. And that's only something you learn in hindsight. Now, after doing this organic marketing, or yeah, this organic marketing, which I know a lot of you are doing with TikTok right now, very similar. I realized it was very slow. And after about a few weeks, I didn't even make a sale. Even though I had all these products for every single sport, baseball, soccer, football, all of these. I had collections for them. They all had different products in them, but no one would buy. And at the time, I thought it was because I had an ugly website and my website was pretty ugly. You could look at the Wayback Generator, look up umrosports.com and you can see it. And it's, it's like an acid attack. I'm not going to lie. I'm just fair warning. It's bad, but hey, it was my first store and I had no guidance. So the reality was the reason why I wasn't really making many sales wasn't necessarily the product selection or the website. It was just because I had been trying to appeal to a very low quality audience and I shot myself in the foot in that regard. But I didn't know that. I just assumed, oh, man, there's something wrong with my website. So I made more changes to it. I made more tweaks. I added more products. And then I remember the first time I made a sale... I was driving to soccer practice. This was February 2nd, 2018, over six years ago. I know I'm, I'm fucking old. And I was driving, or sorry, my parents were driving me because I was a loser and I didn't have my driver's license. And I was in the back seat, just refreshing, just refreshing the app, constantly checking, seeing there's visitors, seeing someone out of the car, seeing someone's at the checkout page. Come on, come on, come on. I was like that elf and shrek where he's like sign it sign it sign it sign it sign it and i was just like complete the purchase complete the purchase right now no, no, i need you to do it and then when the person purchased i was like you signed it hopefully you get that but i i'm gonna be honest even thinking about it i don't know if my camera would pick this up i literally have the hair standing up on my arm because i needed that sale bro i needed it because I spent at least 100 plus hours before I had even made my first sale. I had spent over a month and a half working and constantly replacing everything that was important to me. Video games, my friends, all social life was replaced with dropshipping. I was obsessed. So to finally make that sale, I was convinced, oh my God, there's actually suckers online that will buy from a store made from a 16 year old. That means I can trick more people into doing it and I'll be rich. And then I can buy all the Legos in the world. 
I wasn't a Lego nerd. I was, I was still more of a sports memorabilia type nerd. But it did prove to me it was possible. And that is a powerful moment. Because then you realize, oh my gosh, I can actually build a business. All those videos I watched weren't a lie. I can do this. So after I got my first sale, I decided organic marketing is too slow. It's not consistent and it's not repeatable. So I decided to do some paid ads. And it wasn't even necessarily Facebook or Google ads. I was too intimidated at the time to do that. And I was also just still on a budget and I was scared of them. So I decided to do Instagram influencers, meme pages. That was all the rage at the time. So every single day at school and I have Snapchat stories from my friends that would film me and I have old journals. These were the good old days, I can't lie. Where I was in high school, in my class, every time we had a break at the end of the period for five to 10 minutes, the only thing I was doing was hopping on my phone and just making deals, baby. Just negotiating with these other 15 and 16 year olds who are running these sports meme pages or sports highlight pages with hundreds of thousands of followers. And I had my exact system for okay, I'm going to grab an average post on their page that had average engagement, not their best one, just average because I know ads perform worse. And then I'm going to ask them how many impressions. And then they would tell me, oh, 50,000. And I knew my ad would get about 80% of that. So 40,000. Hey, financial investor, I'm good with numbers. What can I say? And based on that, I knew how much I was willing to pay. So I would lowball the offer. I'd even read Split the Difference by Chris Voss to learn how to negotiate. And a lot of those principles did work because those kids were terrible negotiators. They were terrible at setting their own prices. So I got some really good deals. So every single day, I'd be running multiple pages. Sometimes I'd pay them $3, $5, $10. If I was really big balling, $25. That was pretty crazy if you ask me. And when I did that, I'd started testing more products as well because the first month and a half, although I had hundreds of products in my store, I didn't really promote any of them or test any of them. So I started to actually get a chance to test a few of these different necklace designs and I had to find my winner. So after doing that for the next two months, I started to make sales a lot more consistently. I went from one sale a month to getting hundreds of sales a month. But the reality was even though I was making around four to seven grand a month in revenue, profit was still really poor. It, there was no profit because I was spending a lot of money with these influencers I had my product costs. I had a lot of different things. I didn't find a winner yet, even though I'd started to test about five to 10 products every single month. So about two a week. And that's still very slow in hindsight. But I'd started to develop these relationships and I started to notice some trends where soccer people were really broke. Football people were really broke. Basketball people were really broke. And those are again, very low income sports. So it makes sense. And then eventually I started testing in the baseball niche and then that's when things started to change. So I'd found this new necklace and it was two baseball bats that were perpendicular to each other to form a cross. Money, golden. I knew that was going to be the one. And when I ran ads on my different baseball page connects that I had, I spent maybe $20 the first day of running ads, I made about $150 back. And I was like, holy, this is the one, the big one. And then I contacted the bigger pages in the baseball niche that were more expensive and out of my budget. And I said, hey, I feel like spending some cash today. And I set up some more posts. I had them all written down of what my posts were for today and what my budget was going to be. I went from spending 20 to 100 and that was, I was freaking out because I was like, okay, was this a one day thing? Was this a fluke? And then I made $500 back and then I did the same thing and I rinsed and repeated for the next couple of weeks and that product ended up scaling to over 10 grand revenue and made me my first couple thousand dollars in sales or sorry, in profit from dropshipping. And I was like, oh my God, it's been six months and I have finally cracked the money printing code. This is it. And I was so excited. I put so much work, hundreds of hours, long nights, studying ads. I was reading books at, during school. I was reading books. I don't even read books. I'm illiterate. But I was reading books from Russell Brunson, Dan Ogilvy, Dan Kennedy, all the Dans that are marketing gurus. Like I was really trying to sharpen my skills. I was obsessed with business overall. Gary Vee, I was reading his book. I was reading so many different books. I was obsessed. And that's what you have to be if you want to make it in this game. You can't substitute that. 
Now you might not have as much time as me and that's fine, but you have to be thinking about this constantly because your competition is thinking about this constantly. There's over 5 million dropshippers in the world today. So how in the world do you expect to beat the people that are obsessed that have more time and are hungrier and are willing to hustle more than you when you're just putting a few hours a day and you're just watching some YouTube videos like this, like watching this video doesn't make you special. 99% of people do that. And only the top 1% actually make it in this game. And I fucking love that because it means you have to put in the work that 99% of people aren't willing to do. And 99% of people, I will tell you, are willing to watch YouTube videos. They're willing to comment down below, Ethan, you're on like any other big YouTuber. You actually give sauce. Wow. I haven't heard that one before. They're going to watch courses. They're going to do all that stuff. Paying and swiping your credit card to buy a course or mentorship or any of that stuff doesn't guarantee you success. It's just the first step. In fact, it's really this just the start of your journey. Now the real work begins because now you have skin in the game. So yes, while I do implore you to get coaching and get courses, because then it makes you serious and actually forces you to be accountable because once you pay for information, you are much more likely to actually apply it and execute on it that still doesn't separate you that much from everyone else. What will separate you is being consistent and putting in the work every single day because the things that you can control are your inputs, what you decide to focus on. And the reality is this game is not a get-rich-quick scheme. You're going to learn that as soon as you get into it, and it's going to kick you in the dick. Not the balls, the dick. Even worse. And I got into it to make a quick buck. There's no doubt about that. But I was still obsessed even when I wasn't making sales. And you have to be like that. You can't chase money. You have to have money come to you. And you have to build this garden. You have to build this ecosystem. You have to build an environment that is conducive to making money. And the only environment which is conducive is developing the skills in the different areas and putting in your time and reps and learning the right blueprint from someone who's already done it before. That is the only way. If you want to expedite things, sure. You can obviously go through a coaching program. I and mean, I know with my program, we've had people that are brand spanking new. And then a month or two in, they are already making $1,000 a day. Because there's no, it's not rocket science. I mean, it's just, you have a repeatable process. You have a template that has worked for your products and you share it with someone else and then it can work for them. Now, this is not a coaching pitch. Because I understand YouTubers on the internet, our job is to make this sound super easy. That's all peaches and creams so that you buy our info products. Now, obviously this is not my main income source. I have 15,000 subscribers. I am a very small guppy. So I'm fine with giving you what the reality is. And it's, it's hard. It is not easy. The information, the strategies part, getting that can be hard in the beginning because you don't know who to listen to because you don't know what you don't know and you don't know who's right versus who's wrong. <clears throat> Which is why picking that first coach really matters. And I think it is a process that you would just be delaying if you don't decide to invest into a coaching program because eventually later on in the story, you're going to realize that's the thing that helped me the most. And I don't really know anyone in the space who's gotten to seven, eight figures that hasn't had at least five plus coaches. But that's besides the point. So once I had my first winner, I ended up letting my foot off the gas. I got content. I really did. And I ended up just spending all that money on shoes. I went to StockX. I found the coolest Jordans I could find with tons of colors. And I still own a few of the pairs today, but I just wanted to ball out. And I did. And then suddenly my store went from $1,000 a day back to 500, back to 200, back to... And to make it even worse, I had gotten a DMCA from a competitor brand that saw me running ads on these meme pages. And they're like, hey, we have the original pad on that design. You can't sell this product anymore. So suddenly my first product was gone and I was back to square one and I actually had less money in my bank account than when I started because I had bought a ton of shoes. Not the smartest financial investment. Then again, I was 16. So where do we go from here? We now had had a winning product under our belt for a week or two. We have a bunch of shoes. And also at that point, I got in my first Shopify payment hold of 25%. So I was in a rough place. I was not doing great. And when I had started to scale this first winter, I also spent more time in the business doing things I didn't really enjoy. Because when you start to scale, you have your own unique set of problems. The problems never stop. You just get better at handling the problems. Because 
A lot of times being a dropshipper is just being a firefighter. You have to constantly put out fires and just learn how to deal with a lot of stress. This is not easy. And then a lot of times when you're starting, you don't have a team. This is a job. Like it is not a business when you make money with dropshipping. If you do not have a team that can run the business for you, it is a job. And for me, that job was answering angry emails from customers, asking about their orders, asking about tracking times. Cause I was using, I believe at the time it wasn't AliExpress. It was, I think DH gate. Yeah. I was using DH gate for a lot of my products. And there was no like easy fulfillment with that. There was no Oberlo, easy integration. I had to manually fulfill every single order. And when you get 20 to 30 orders a day and you have to constantly put in the name, type it out individually, the address, there was no address at a address auto completion. So I had to look up each address, make sure it was legit. So people would actually get their order. And it was hour two, every single day doing that hour two, every single day answering emails. My morale was at an all time low. It was not fun anymore because I really enjoyed the ads. I enjoyed the marketing. That was where I knew my brain was really best utilized. But all my time was going to the mundane task of just maintaining the business, not making money, just maintaining what I currently made. So I was stuck. I was stuck. So I gave it another three months. I tested some more products. And at that point, I tested over 25 plus products. I had one winner. Winner. But there still wasn't much of a breakthrough. It was tough. So I decided to hire my first employee. And it was this Canadian kid who had DM'd me on my account that said, Hey, Ethan, I want to be a graphic designer for you. I'm 14 years old, super hungry. And usually most graphic designers will charge about 20 to $50 per post that they make. And that's very reasonable. But this kid said, for $1, I will make you five posts. And if you pay me $100, if you pay me my salary up front today, I will make 500 designs for you this month. And I thought, this is my meal ticket. This is my kid. Finally, some leverage. I'm going to make this kid my slave until I make thousands and thousands of dollars. And that's not how I treat my current employees. I'm kind of a little bit better with that, a little more humanitarian. I have a heart at the end of the day. And if you work hard at Ethan Dobbins Incorporated, you can really level up. And then next year, I can be buying my Lamborghini. Who wants a Lamborghini anyways? I want my Porsche 911. So after I hired this kid, I paid him his full $100 in PayPal. And that was still a lot of money to me at the time. I had maybe $500 in my bank account. So this was a huge investment. He sent a few designs that were decent. And I was like, okay, cool. So he sent me about two out of the 500. And then he had ghosted me. And then he blocked me. And then he ended up starting a competitive store, a direct competitor and ripoff of my brand called Aloha Sports. Now I had my first rival. I had been scammed. I had a payment hold. I had no winning product. I had no bitches. I had no riz. I had social anxiety. I was basically just retarded. I know. And now I make candles with women on the internet. If you thought I was doing this out of the own, out of my own heart's content, you are sorely mistaken. I did it because I was on a date with this Haitian girl. Same Haitian girl from the last Raw video. It's been going pretty good. She's perfect so far. I hope she doesn't ever get real and deep with me because right now she's perfect and she'll just mess it up by doing that. As soon as I hear about her emotions and feelings and her childhood traumas, that's when we leave. Smash and dash. Come and go. I lost about 50% of my testosterone as soon as I made that candle. Like my right testosterone... My right testicle immediately was protesting and decided to explode. So now I'm only down to one. But then again, that is kind of the motto I always had with my outfits. That my, if my outfit isn't at least 50% gay, it's not a good outfit. And if you're a white woman right now watching this video that plans to get offended by for the gay and social retarded community, just know I have tested these jokes on those people because they are my friends and they always laugh. So these are proven to convert. Don't you worry. Don't need to get offended. So where do we go from here? We're nine months in. We've been scammed. I decided I needed some help. So I reached out to this guy named, gosh, I'm blanking on his name, Alzheimer's. God, it's a terrible disease. I believe his name is Jay, but at the time he had some cringy Instagram at like 
poison merchant something stupid but basically it was a british guy who was flexing the lifestyle he had the designer clothes he had a really nice car he was flexing screenshots he had no youtube videos which should have been my first red flag so he actually had no proof that he actually was doing what he was doing or that he had the ability to teach because making money in something and actually being able to teach it is completely different and that's why you see a lot of professional athletes that are at the top of their game and when they become coaches they are terrible because just because you have the skill doesn't mean you can teach it it's completely different so I paid this guy $100 for a month of coaching. And in hindsight, that's also really stupid because if someone's making 100 k a month, they make $100 every hour. So why would they teach you for a month for $100? I was naive. And the reality is you're never going to get an actual good coach that will invest their time, money, and resources into you for less than $1,500 a month. Like it's just not going to happen. But I didn't know that. So I thought it was a really good deal because everyone else I talked to, yes, was thousands of dollars a month. So I was like, okay, this, this guy's 90% cheaper. Let's do it. So when I went to have my first phone call with him after paying, he didn't show up. And then I reached out to him and he had blocked my number. So now I'm down another hundred dollars. I am down to my last couple hundred dollars. I've been scammed twice. I have a payment hold. I have no bitches. I have no riz and I am socially retarded. Not a good spot to be in. And I was at nearly my breaking point. So I decided, okay, I'm going to go solo for one to two more months and just see what happens. And I ended up losing all my money. And that's the end of the story. Good night. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I ended up losing all my money. So at that point, I had done about thirty dollars to $40,000 in revenue over nine months, over a year, which sounds great. The profit wasn't even a dollar. Or maybe it was, but I just, I spent a lot of the money on shoes. So after a year, I was ashamed. I didn't tell my friends. I didn't tell my parents about what I was really doing. My parents knew kind of because I needed their information because I wasn't 18. And I couldn't have a PayPal account. So I needed their help with that. But it was a resounding failure. And again, most people at that point would have quit. Most people honestly would have quit after the first month or two because that's you don't have thick skin, you have no resilience, and you just want it to come easy to you. So I ended up having to get a job back in Publix. And that was one of my first jobs also along with working as an umpire. That's how I got my first $1,000 to start. I was a 13-year-old getting yelled at by drunk belligerent parents at a t-ball game that I would umpire. Those parents are aggressive. Definitely helps you develop a thick skin though. So I got that job back, saved up some money over the course of a few months, and then I gave it one last shot. I said, I'm not going to do this alone. I clearly don't know what the hell I'm doing. Sure, I know how to make sales. Sure, I know how to scale a little bit, but I really don't know how to make this consistent. So this next mentor I chose was imperative to my journey. If I didn't pick the right one, I mean, oh my God, I would not be here because I got my ass kicked. So I decided to choose Noah Brewer. I paid him $1,500 a month, which was a shit ton of money to me at the time. I was nervous beyond belief, but a lot of times you realize those decisions in which you're nervous are usually the right ones. If you're not fearful, there's probably something wrong with you when you invest into a program. But a lot of the times, in order to get results you've never had before, you need to take actions that you've never done before. If you stay in your comfort zone, you keep doing things the way you've done it, then you're going to keep getting the same results because it's the definition of insanity. If you keep doing the same things over and over again and expect a different result, then you're insane. And I realized that I needed to make a change. I had to call my shot. I had to take a shot that was big to finally see if I actually could make this work. So Noah was my shot. And after learning with him for about a month or two, we had retested the baseball bat necklace. So honestly, I think the DMSA was fake to begin with. And it started to work because when Noah looked at my business, I finally had something that I never had before. And that was an outside perspective as an outside set of eyes, actually looking at what I was doing to tell me if I was doing things right or wrong. And he told me immediately, your website has 20 different flaws in it. Your ads have 20 different flaws. I didn't realize my ads were so crap. And if I look at them today, man, they are terrible. They are just objectively atrocious. And my website was too. There was no doubt, but I had a lot of ego tied into it because I had put a lot of time into it. And that's something you don't want to make as a beginner. You don't want to make that mistake of just saying, because I put a lot of work into it, therefore it's good. Because it probably isn't. Just because you watch a YouTube video and then spent 
10, 20, 50 hours replicating the exact website you saw doesn't mean your website is good. And a lot of times you don't even understand why you're copying that person. You just think you should because they made money, which isn't the case. You want to understand the real deeper philosophy and psychology behind why they do what they do and really analyze why it has worked so that you can take the learnings and then take the learnings from other people to come up with your own secret sauce. Because if you talk to anyone who's made in this space that's doing seven and eight figures, the reality is they all just have a great marketing blueprint that they developed that works for them. Their secret template or formula that when they apply and they test products that they have a deep knowledge of for a specific target persona, it just works. Most people are just really good at selling to a specific customer persona. Frankie Shaw, I know, is those boho Californian type women. There was a guy I was talking to last month who's doing 500K a month, and he's like, you know, Ethan, even though I'm a 25 year old Dubai douchebag, I am really good at selling products to women above the age of 35 plus in the anti aging niche. I just know that industry really well. I can put my brain into their brain and put myself into their shoes, and I know exactly what they want. So it's an interesting approach with product research that way. And most people don't talk about that. Instead of just finding gimmicky products like diffusers and you don't really know who you're selling it to, maybe males, maybe females, actually go a layer deeper because the surface level of marketing is just knowing that your product is for a specific gender or a specific type of person. But the elite marketers know is specifically the type of persona that buys that product. Like for Gymshark, they have a specific fitness gym bro style guys that they advertise to. For other brands, they know, okay, Lululemon, that's more for the clean girl, luxury, bougie, aesthetic type of athlete. But all these different clothing brands in the athletic apparel space, they all market to different people, different subsets. And you have to understand the subset for your product. And then once you understand the subset, then that allows you to research products beforehand, even if they don't have a lot of sales, but you have that inclination, you have that knowledge, you have that frame of reference to know that, oh, I know this market inside and out and I know people in this space would love this type of product, even if it doesn't have a lot of order validation. But obviously when you're a beginner, just because you're gonna make a lot of mistakes with product selection, have your criteria having something along the lines of order volume being a part of it. Because a product should have some sales before you decide to sell it, especially if you've never had a winner before. Because you don't have an eye trained yet for winners until you find a few winners of your own that you've actually scaled. So after working with Noah, I will admit my skills just dramatically increased and I finally really had a blueprint for how to scale. So I'd taken the baseball bat necklace. I took some other products like this arrowhead necklace and anchor necklace and all these different jewelry items and I started to really scale them. And I finally had consistent results where the year after year after year, I was doing at least 200 to 300 grand in revenue with that brand. And then after three years, and it took a lot of hard work and learning from more mentors. It wasn't just Noah. After I finally had some uh, success, I learned from Noah. I learned from a lot of other people. There's too many to name, honestly, at this point. That 500K a month guy I talked to is now mentoring me. I'm constantly looking for new information. It's a Kaizen approach. You never know everything. You have to constantly be learning and evolving or you're going to be dying. And there's so many new trends, so many new ways of doing things that you have to be sharp. You have to be on the ball. But after three years, I had scaled the business to over 500K in total revenue, which was really great. I had over 10,000 customers. I had a big email list. I had a big social media presence as well. And I'd gotten a little tired of it. Frankly, when you have ADHD and every single three-letter acronym for a mental disorder, you tend to want to bounce around and you don't like to stick doing the same thing for a while. And at the perfect time, I think God just knew that I was ready and I was done The same brand that DMC had me had sent me an email saying, we want to buy your brand. We don't want you competing with us anymore. We want a non-compete closure and we want to buy your brand from you. So I started to negotiate. I threw out some numbers. They threw out their numbers. They tried to lowball me and we eventually settled on $72,000. That would be paid out in five installments. And I had to come up with a 30 page business plan of exactly what I was doing because at that time I actually had started to build a team. I had virtual assistants for customer support and order fulfillment so I don't have to do that shit anymore and just focus on the things that grow the business, which you have to do. You have to actually learn how to hire people, train them, have SOPs, have templates for handling those emails from customers. And once you start to build a team, that's when you really have a business because then you can leverage your time and the business can actually work for you instead of you constantly working in it. And I had finally learned that from Noah. Noah taught me how to hire virtual assistants from Upwork and online jobs at PH. And if you want a video on how to build a team, let me know. Comment down below. And if you've gotten this far in the video, comment 
Smooth Operator. Smooth Operator. Hello, I am Carlos Sainz, driver for Ferrari. I am very happy to win this race. My appendix, it bursted into a million pieces. I I am one of the best drivers, though, in all of Formula One. All right, let's finish this video. So, eventually, I sold the brand, five installments, and then I used that money to invest into other brands, home decor, my slim waist. You've seen the other brands I've scaled from zero to 80K in a few weeks because I'd finally learned the skills. And man, it took so much longer than it should have. It took a lot more trial and error and a lot more stress. And I mean, there's a lot of other things and <laughs> that happened during that journey that nearly made me quit. But the reality was I'd finally developed skills in marketing, product research, website design for my specific customer persona of broke high school athletes after years of trial and error and thousands and thousands of dollars into investing into coaches, courses, etc. It took all of that to finally get some level of success. And then the next three years, because I've been doing this for six years, that was just the first half of my journey. The next three years was when I really got the chance to scale to 500K a year, to 80 grand months, 100K months, and then finally actually starting to teach people. And that's when this channel was born four years ago. It was actually the last year of running Umero Sports. So still got the hoodie, still got everything. I hope you guys enjoy the journey and this story. Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. I'm trying to think if there was anything else that was important during that journey. Today's Sunday, so I'm going to be golfing right after this video. That's why I'm wearing this fit. I'm going to go golfing, and I'm going to go do a day pass at a nice bougie hotel with the Haitian girl who I made this candle with. I know, I'm cuffed. I'm simping, simping hard. Don't worry, we got a roster. I'm not the type to build a roster. I'm not that guy. He's not that guy. He's not Timothy Butler. But um, yeah, it's going to be a fun day. Also got a trip to Paris and London on Tuesday. That drop should be money, baby. It's real. It can it can really change your life. But no, honestly, I, I, I would not change the way I did it. I would not change the journey. But man, I would just say for yourself, obviously, if you don't want to have to go through the same level of trial and error and push yourself to the brink of nearly quitting on multiple occasions, then yeah, it's going to be a lot more smooth sailing, obviously, if you work with someone one-on-one. -on -one. And I get that I have my coaching program, but the reality is, yes, whether it's me or someone else, if you really want to get success as fast as possible and just learn the skills that it takes to make money and stop focusing on chasing the money, then yes, working with someone and getting that outside perspective, I cannot overstate how important that fucking is. It is so important and is the only reason why I made it today. I, and I would love to say that there's other people that had different journeys, but I really don't think so. I don't know anyone that has not had coaching. So if I was to summarize what made me successful, it was a deep obsession with this as soon as I got into it. It was constantly hustling and grinding on my skills and developing them and getting 1% better every single day and not being attached to the outcome of what my sales or results were. It was just constantly focusing on how can I get better at my ads? How can I get better at my website? How can I get better at the most important skills, which were marketing? And I also was a firefighter. I dealt with so many issues. I dealt with so many problems and I still face them head on. I didn't quit. I didn't complain. I didn't say, oh God, feel bad for me. This isn't my fault. I took accountability and I fucking solved problems. Even though I was 16, I could have made all the excuses in the world. I could have said, wow, I should be partying. I should be out with my friends right now. Why am I dealing with this? This is so much stress for a 16 year old. No, I just dealt with business. I stood and I stand still to this day on business. So I hope you learned something out of this. I'm going to go golf. Let's go golfing.